welcome to Mrs. Sebastian's studio again. I'm so glad you've decided to join me on another learning adventure. Today, we're gonna to be creating rat origami. I'm gonna be having a short slide presentation to tell you some interesting facts about rats. I wanted to let you know in my household, we have kept rats as pets. They are wonderful pets, by the way. And uh, we're gonna be making rat origami. So to get started, I'm gonna tell you a super silly rat joke. How can you get rats to laugh? Will you tell it some cheesy jokes? <laughs> yeah, cheesy, I like that. All right, let's learn some interesting facts about rats now. All right, today we're gonna to be learning a little bit about rats. Uh, if you're in my fourth grade classroom, uh, somewhere in your reading book, there's going to be a story that you'll have about Year of the Rat. And you know, rats are often featured in lots of scary Halloween sorts of things. Uh, really, they're quite clean and great intelligent pets. Um, we're gonna be talking a little bit about all the great things that make rats special today. And then we're gonna be making origami. So, uh, there are 56 known species. Who knew that? There's a ton of them. Some of them are really small and some of them are really big. Uh, they can be found all around the world including the Norway rat, the pack rat, and the roof rat. Hmm, pack rat. I wonder why they call them that. Maybe because they collect lots of things. And then of course there's the roof rat. They must be found on roofs somewhere. And the Norway rat was probably originated in Norway. Oh right, those are really cool rats in those pictures too. Um, some rats can get really big. The Sumatran, and please forgive me if I mispronounce that word, the bamboo rat can weigh up to uh, 8.8 .8 pounds. That's the size of a small house cat. Uh, to me, this rat uh, looks a little bit more like uh, maybe a prairie dog or a groundhog almost, but apparently that's what they look like. Uh, did you know rats can laugh? Uh, they may not chuckle like us, but you know, we've learned that rats do make high pitched noises when they play. A rat's teeth never stop growing. Uh, a lot of them have to gnaw on things like wood to help file them down. And their tails keep them very cool. So, uh, you know, rats expand and contract the blood vessels in their tails to regulate their body temperature. Rats are revered in some cultures, like in Northwest India, is the home to more than 15,000 rats who are worshiped by the temple's devotees. And then lastly, hey, we're gonna be making rats today out of origami, how fun. Let's get ready to learn how to do that. All right, in order to make our teeny tiny rat origami, what we're going to need is a piece of origami paper. We're using square origami paper, which is colored on one side and white on the other. You'll need some hands to do this wonderful look. And of course, your creativity and imagination to add all the wonderful details on it once we are done. All right, so for our very first step, we are going to need to flip it over to the white page, the white side, and then please turn it so that it looks like a diamond. Shines bright like a diamond, yes. Then we're gonna take this bottom point and fold it up so it's even with the top point. This is going to be folding it in half. This is called the mountain fold. And you can see why it is called a mountain because well, you can see the shape. It looks like a mountain. So I just folded it in half from the bottom up. Now for our next step, we're gonna fold it in half again. This time we're gonna pick up the left corner and fold it in half so that that corner will be even with the right corner. So we're just folding this in half, this time left to right. And you know, to make these creases nice and even, I like to get them even. Then one hand does the holding while the other hand does the folding. Then for our next step, we're gonna go ahead and open it up. So you should see the mountain again, and then there'll be a crease down the middle. Next, 
we're gonna take this left side here and we're gonna fold it up so it's even with the top point. So I'm just gonna take this and notice how this side here will become even with this crease down the middle. So I'm just taking one side here and folding it up like this. If you liked it that time, get ready, we're gonna do it again. Pick up that right side, fold up that corner so it's even with the top corner. And again, that bottom edge becomes even with that crease down the middle. And then go ahead and crease it down. In origami, it is important to get those creases nice and even and nice and sharp. So spend an extra minute or so making those creases nice and sharp for you. leave those folded up and our next step is taking the top flap on the right hand side and making this corner touch the bottom corner at the bottom so we're just going to pick that up fold that flap in half so it is now even there you go straight down top flap point now reaches the bottom point And boy, do we love symmetry in origami. We're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Take that top flap, take that top point of the flap and fold it down so it touches the bottom point. Crease that down the middle. Keep those folded down. Here's our next step. We're gonna take these points here Hold and we're those just gonna over. So I do this about a finger space up and it's at an angle. So watch this one very closely. So I'm just gonna take that there and I'm gonna fold it over like this. So it's kind of a, a, an awkward kind of 45 degree angle fold, but you can see you just take the tip and fold it over. So now the side becomes this straight edge going across. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. Yes, it will overlap the other one, but that is a-okay. For our next step, we are going to flip it over. When you flip it over, make sure you left flip it to over. right. That means don't flip it over top to bottom, just flip it over left to right, just like this. Now for our next step, I like to call this the, the kite fold. We're gonna pick up this corner here and make this edge right here line up with the crease down the middle. So really we're picking up this here and folding it over like this. I think in a minute why you'll see why it's called the kite fold. So you're making this edge here even with the crease down the middle. You're gonna do the same thing with the other side too. And 
And now you can almost imagine that this would be an upside down kite. Alright, now for our next step, we're going to go ahead and fold this in half. So I'm just going to take this left point and fold it over so it meets this right point here, straight down the middle. Now, I like to call this next step a little bit of a foo-foo step because it's really just tweaking this tail to make it a little bit more slender and Rest poke out from the... But you can see here already that we have an ear here. And if we flip it over, you can see that we have an ear over here, just like so. And the head is pretty much done. So to go ahead and make that tail, let me show you what you gotta do. So I'm gonna open this up like so. All right. And I'm going to bring in this part here. So really, if you look very closely, um, right here, right along this point here, I'm gonna kind of bring this up like this. So see how this tip on the right hand side comes over and touches the tip on the left hand side? That's really what you want. All right, next. I'm just going to fold this back just a little bit. Um, and I kind of leave about a pencil's width here for this. Um, but I'm going to fold it back. But there's a crease that's going to be right here. Let me just show you with the pencil. But you don't need to do this step. I'm just showing you so that you can see it a little bit better. And that is there. So we just folded that top flap all the way back over to the right hand side but there's now a little bit of a fan fold in here now when we bring the whole thing down you can see that his tail is a little bit separated now from the rest of them definitely looks a little bit more slender than his body and now we have his ears right here. What's nice with these two is that these will uh, stand up on their own as well. Um, you can also use a marker or if you have googly eyes you could add googly eyes to your uh, rat. I'm going to add a little eyeball and some nose. I'm going to do it on both sides because they have symmetry. I could even add a few little lines for a claw here or even back here because you know they got their little front claws and their back claws. And then I like to add these little curves on the back for the tail. To me that makes it look a little bit more rat-like. I have an alternative way of doing the tail that I'm gonna show you next, but you can do your tail, of course, any way you'd like. Um, so I've got his little ears fluffed up, and this would just be an alternative way of doing his tail, but I have seen some people um, fold the tail back and forth and make it crinkly. I have seen some people just kind of twist it to make it longer and skinnier. Um, any of those little alternative uh, ways of doing the tail are absolutely great. It means you're using your imagination 
and you're coming up with something new and it doesn't just get any better than that in art. All right, and there is the cute little rat. And like I said, he will stand up as well, just like so. You can even grab his tail and make him move around. I think that's pretty cute too. You might even be able to wear him on your finger. Ooh, good little puppet. All right, that is the rat. I hope you enjoyed them.